Borders has long been famous for her fighting men. For the last 300 years, the King's Own Royal Border Regiment has recruited men from Cumbria and the King's Own Scottish Borderers from the districts north of the border. This year, all that glorious history will come to an end as the old regiments are amalgamated into larger units of the British Army. What will be lost? Was there a particular character to the KOSB? You could give an indication of what, which service you wanted to go into and which regiment or corps you wanted to go into. You put down a list of uh, regiments that you wanted to join and I, I put down the KOSB. They had this brotherly feeling which stemmed from Scotland and the borders and was different from the Highlands or the city regiments in Glasgow or Edinburgh. I'd watched father. By then he was a brigadier and, and life looked pretty good in the army. And I thought, this will do me fine, thank you. And when he said, and what do you want to be? I said, a king's own Scottish border, because I didn't realise there was anything else, practically. It's a family regiment, and everybody in, in the regiment has got somebody that's been in the regiment before. My brother joined the regiment, my son joined the regiment, who were both commissioned in the regiment. My grandson is now serving with the regiment in Northern Ireland. So it's, it's a great family affair. People can scoff at that and say, but why does that make it any better? And the reason is it's close-knit. If you're soldiering with people from your own town, it, it kind of makes it that wee bit safer, I suppose, you, you, and the knowledge that this guy is the same as you. I mean, to say that you were in a regiment that had fought twice in Scotland, at Killiecrankie and at Culloden, we were always very quiet about Culloden, and I'm still rather quiet about it because I'm descended from the commander of the Stuarts of Appin who were fighting on the other side. Were the King's Own Royal Border Regiment similar, or was there a distinctive Cumbrian streak to their collective personality? Recruiting in the place of origin shaped the regiment because there was this entity of 600 people, most who came from Cumberland and North Lancashire. So a total knowledge of each other and a total knowledge of where they came from and its own character. It was a character of the region that where the soldiers came from and that's what you became known for. This real soul of the Cumbrian is just a solid, practical person, you know. He's, there's no frills with the Cumbrian, is it, you know? They are the sort of people who will do their duty, do a difficult job in very difficult circumstances, but will not want praise for it. That's what we were asked to do. We've done it. You're brought up in that area. You're brought up as a board of people. I liken it to you get fish where they spawn in the river, they make back to their own particular area. There's something about it. You know, you come from Gordon, or you come from Roxborough, you come from Selkirk, um, and there is this, this bond. We're all descendants of, the, you know, the Armstrongs and the Kerrs and all the people who fought around the border. And so we make good soldiers. It's a very personal, dangerous business. Who are of a certain character, and the Cumbrian is in that character mode. He's extremely tough, he's wiry, he's resolute, he's got a cynical sense of humour, uh, he won't give in easily, and all these are the perfect characteristics for an infantryman. It's border folk. They don't say much, they don't boast or anything, they don't beat their chest, but they do it, and they're awfully hard to beat. Steady! For many raw recruits, the day they joined the Border Regiment, or the KOSB, was a shock. They ceased to be civilians, and the process of making them part of a fighting unit began. Pay attention to what your sergeant said. So you had this culture, even when you turned up as a young officer, if you were wise, you just listened and respected him. He'd take you along. When I first reported to uh, the, our depot at Berwick-on-Tweed, I had to be interviewed by the uh, regimental secretary and uh, he spoke to me for some time telling me how to behave in the officer's mess and how to hold my knife and fork and so on. And just as I was leaving, 
about 20 minutes later, making for the door, he said, one more thing, Hewitt. Never wear the kilt south of Perth. Well, I always fancied being a soldier. I thought, Bod Regiment, pretty handy for home. When you may be short of a bob or two, I could just nip home at the weekend and get a tea and cakes. So I opted for the border regiment. And I went to the uh, drill hall at Gala Shields. The recruiting officer was our next door neighbour in Melrose. And he said, What do you want to join? I said, I want to join the KOSB. He said, Oh, I'm sorry, you can't join the KOSB with no rifles. I said, That's a funny way to join the army. My father was 40 years in the Navy. And, he, and because of my eyesight, he says, you'll never get in the ranks. And you're not going as a poultice walloper or a bloody writer. So I says, so I went and joined the army. The first days there were somewhat of a shock, you know. A barrack room with 30 people in it uh, from all walks of life. I'd never been away from home. I was 18 years old, like all the rest were. The first day, I think we had a medical. <clears throat> the medical was a very simple thing. I think they kind of felt your arm, and if you are warm, they did that. You're okay. The barber was a chappy that had the world's um, fastest haircuts. He used to be in the Sunday Post. He could do a haircut in so many seconds. Straight away. <laughs> It's quite common now to have straight hour, but then it wasn't it. You had hair then. Well, I had hair then. And then you go and get all your kit, and obviously nothing fits. There was only one person that fitted, um, and I wouldn't like to denigrate the chap, but that was a first seemingly baggy trousers, and the berries never fit. And, and it was, aye, that'll fit you, that'll fit you, that'll fit you, two of them. Boots left, boots right. I was very proud to get into uniform and get paid for it as well. It was brilliant. Once uniforms, boots and haircuts had been dished out, new soldiers were introduced to discipline, to react to orders instantly. And one of the best ways of instilling that was in training and square bashing. Basic training was... There was a lot of emphasis put on foot drill. It's surprising the number of folk that have uh, two left feet or two right feet. And in our squad, I mean, even getting 40 men to walk the same, there was all, there's always at least yin. Disney can his right foot or his left foot. We were put through our paces in, in a session of drill movements. You know, come to attention, stand at ease, about done. It must have been heartbreaking for the drill instructors and hilarious for anybody looking at it. And there was a little sergeant in Ireland called Sergeant Duffy, and he used to come up to me or anybody else and say, if this is the cream of the British Army, so and so and so and so. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> few swear words. But uh, their job was to train you. They weren't there to be your friend. They were there to teach you how to survive, teach you how to do the job properly. They weren't there to be here your mum or your dad. You felt part of a body, part of a, a, a machine, and you got, began to eventually feel uh, that you were part of this machinery and, and you had a job to do. The character of the regiments of the borders was formed partly by their history, and the KOSB covered themselves in glory at the Battle of Minden. The Battle of Minden was fought in 1759, uh, where the regiment uh, gained immortal glory by defeating the French. As the troops went into battle, they plucked roses. On the 1st of August each year, the, every man in the battalion wears a red rose in his hat to celebrate the Battle of Minden. The Royal Day would be a big parade which would um, involve the trooping of the French drums, of which the Battle of Arroyo was all about, where the 34th of foot basically beat the 34th of line French regiment, the equivalent. And as you do, the spoils of war went with us, including the drums, the mace, and other 
sort of stuff which is probably still in the officers mess today and no doubt we've had countless letters from the French wanting the kit back but um, I'm afraid that's where it'll stay. We have some very potent symbols. We wear the glider from being glider borne troops in the Second War. Those are only part of it. It's the collective psyche of the regiment, which is very difficult really to put your finger on, very difficult to explain to someone who isn't sympathetic to what, what that sort of collection. I guess, you know, those Roman legions who came up here onto Hadrian's Wall had it as well. You, you've sworn allegiance to the Queen and your country, but in many ways you, you hang your hat on your regiment and that's what it's about, to serve through the people of this county. Coming up in part two, veterans of the KOSB and the KORBR talk of the action that they saw in living memory, the campaigns of the Second World War.